everybody. I am Spencer. I'm Laura. And we are the Williamses. We're married. We also have board games. Therefore, we are married with board games. You got it. Welcome to our review of The Ruhrer. The Ruhrer. The Ruhrer. Ruhrer. <laughs> Ruhrer. Uh, this is number two, game number two in the Coal Trilogy from Thomas Spitzer and Capstone Games. Mm -hmm. It's all about coal. All of it. And the Ruhr. Every bit of it. So last game, the first game that we did, um, was about the actual mining. Mm -hmm. Now we are to the transport. Let's move forward in history a little bit, gone a little bit through time. And we're going to take a look at how we're going to take some of that coal and get it to where we're we need to go. We're going to distribute this yeah. stuff. All right, so let's take a quick look at how to play. The Ruhrer. The Ruhrer. Ruhrer. So, <laughs> as you can see, there's a lot of stuff on the table. And quite frankly, if we went over how to play, this would be a 30 minute video. Yes. So we're not going to go over every detail. We're just gonna give you kind of a gist of what you can expect when you play and the, the types of mechanisms, maybe some more favorite mechanisms yeah. uh, in the game. So the idea is you are a ship on the Ruhrer. The Ruhr. And you are uh, <laughs> collecting coal and you're going to be delivering it. And um, when you deliver it, you get points. Well, gold. Gold. Mm -hmm. You get gold <laughs> because that's what, I mean, gold is points. Okay, yes. I mean, in my book. All right. Okay. Um, so anyway, and so that's the idea of the game, really. Mm -hmm. You're picking up coal and you're delivering it. Right, but there's also some, you know, resource management, mm -hmm. um, allocation and knowing when and what to purchase, yep. what to what to upgrade. Exactly. Uh, different those kinds of things. You're also going to be doing some action selection mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. 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 So I'm um, just a real basic overview of what a turn structure looks like. So this is what this is your ship. Um, it's it's really cute and wooden. Um, and this is a four player game, as you can see, there's stuff for four people. We don't have everything out on the table because it's just not it's necessary just a lot of stuff. <laughs> at this point. Um, but the way it works is um, it just there are uh, this many rounds, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes. Twelve rounds in the game. At the beginning of each round, you'll move the round marker, which is a historical event. Right, it's got the year up in the top left yep. corner of what's going on and in the rule book it even has like a little footnote telling you what historically was happening in that year and what kind of impact that had on the coal trade. Yeah, yeah, it's very ac historically accurate which is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. So you move, you resolve the event, it may be good, it may be bad because that's life, right? Since it's history, sometimes good things happen in history, sometimes you bad things. You pretty much know if it's outlined in red, yeah. something bad's about to happen. Yeah, some you may get gold, some you may have to pay, or you may not be able to do a certain thing. I'm mm -hmm. um, just depending on what ha what the year is. But it also is good to look ahead and kind of steal yourself for that. Yeah, no, it's coming next. Yes. And the next thing is there's a bag full of these tiles. It's probably something I should have put on the table right. over here. Here it is. <laughs> um, you put some tiles in this bag, and they are um, demand slash. Uh, markers, d demand markers mm -hmm. that you draw, and it's an event. And so, in addition to this event, yes, and it'll be something else similar. And then it'll um, get tossed from the game. Yep, exactly. So again, it could be good, could be bad. Mm -hmm. The next thing is you will place your ship. Right. Um, so you will. Um, whoopsies. You'll go to where there is coal, which is signified by a die mm -hmm. placed on the board. Yes, dice are represented as coal, or coal is representative. representative of coal. Yes. And uh, how many pips you see indicates how much coal you will be transporting to the next station mm -hmm. of where it will be dropped off. And um, usually a port where you're gonna be dropping it off is just the next stopover. Mm -hmm. But then there are these fun little obstacles you have to cross yeah. along the way. So in addition to placing your uh, barge where you want to place it, which again, you want to place it somewhere where there's coal, um, you will take one of your uh, markers here and you will select, this is the action selection yes. part of it, you will select one of these actions. They may be something like you can um, move, you can pilot down here so you'll be able to move down river. Move further down river. Yep. You can go past the stop where you were going to go and maybe go to one that's going to get you some more money. Yeah. 
or, or it's a bigger city. But this, these are free and you can only go downriver. Mm -hmm. But if you choose to do so, you can pay money to do a more advanced thing like hauling, which moves your, your boat upstream. Right, it's gonna bring you back up the stream because mm -hmm. thematically, obviously, you have to go with the flow and you're gonna mm -hmm. have to go all the way down the river to um, the port here at the end. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you have to haul in order to get back up the yeah. river to start over again. Mm -hmm. And so you will have to do that eventually. Um, and that is an action that costs money in yeah. order to execute. And then there are different combinations of the two. And, and this one's to move coal from over here, this, this little supply onto the board. So you, once you deliver them, you can get them back onto the board. Right, because once you take the coal from um, a station where it's being stored, mm -hmm. you have to get coal back in there right. in, order to, in order to deliver more later. So that's how you're right. going to move them out onto the board. So that's that phase, putting your ship out and then choosing the action. Mm -hmm. The next phase is actually carrying it out. Yes. So if I were to choose this to uh, just move down to pilot, to, pilot. to move down river, I would take my ship, I move it here, and then I take the coal here. I've just delivered it. But uh-oh. You crossed um, an obstacle there. Yes, I crossed over these rapids, essentially. And do you know what happens when you transport coal on a boat down some rapids? Wah, 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 wah. It, degrades it degrades the coal. Yep. And so it, essentially you're delivering a little bit less because yep. maybe jo some jostled overboard or it simply just like ground down a little bit and so you can't get all the tiny little pieces out of the boat to deliver. So Absolutely. It's going to degrade by one. And so, so then um, you'll yeah. deliver it and you'll collect the money for that much mm -hmm. coal. And exactly. Then place it back on the supply track there. Yep, so everybody will do that. Mm -hmm. The next thing is you can get these upgrades to your player boards. Yes if you've done the requirements. So over here, you can see, well, yours is a different, oh no, yours is the right way. Um, it's got different colors and different dots, and those represent the amount of times you have delivered coal to those particular regions on the board. Yes. And if you've done those things, then you can acquire the different upgrades. They may be special abilities for you that you can do later. Mm -hmm. um, they may be um, some... Getting like, a warehouse there yeah. at the port that'll get you extra money. Like bonuses warehouse. when you do certain things. Mm -hmm. And so, as with many games of this type, the more you go, the more efficient, the more upgrades you can get, and just become an overall better coal pickup. More efficient. And, yeah. yeah, pick up and deliverer. Yes. Yes. Um, and then the, after that phase, you have the opportunity to purchase things. For example, you can purchase a lock, and it will go on the board in these obstacle places. Right, so that's going to smooth out your travel so that it won't degrade your coal when you cross over that region. Yep. And then um, other things, you can buy warehouses and, and yes. move warehouses. And then finally, points are awarded based on some things that have happened in the round. Uh, most importantly, if you have a warehouse over here, and it happens to be representative of a flag that's been placed on the board, as is part of each round, then you get some additional points. The points are kept track of down here. And there are just a lot of ways to gain points. I mean, at the end of the game, you'll get points for your warehouses that you've placed on the board. Um, actually, if you've got majorities or if you have them in certain cities. Yeah, if you have um, all of them in a certain region, mm -hmm. that's going to get you more points, especially if you've gotten further here inland. Yeah, when there are some of the progress markers will give you points at the end of the game. And then you may have some, you can take debt. So if you need to pay for something, you don't have the money for it, you can take some debt. But mm -hmm. if you have a debt token at the end of the game, you'll lose points. Right. So it's all about, you know, getting the most points delivered the most coal efficiently, but also gaining these upgrades. And at the end of the game, the person that has the most points wins. There are a couple of variants dependent or based on the amount of players. They're not too um, jarring as far as what it changes in the rules. But there is a whole other module called the Ohio, which takes this, because this is all over here in Europe, um, as in areas you would expect to find over there, but it takes the mechanisms and places it in Kentucky. Are you ready for this? Bam, ah. bam. On the other side, you're now in America. Yeah. And essentially, it's the same mechanisms. There are a couple of differences. Yes, um, because over here, you're not hauling coal. Right. 
Um, it's more about resources. It's, yeah, there's several different kinds of resources. Like um, there. there's some wheat and there is um, cattle. And, and iron. Yeah, the type of things you'd find in this time period. Um, but overall, you get the idea. I'm delivering coal, dole, coal as dice. And um, whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. I feel like I want to get some like some coal and like rub it and feel like I've been putting it on ships and stuff. You you, you want to do that? I do. No, nope, so I'm good. Let's talk about the game, shall we? All right. Okay. So um, as we've said, this is the the second in the coal trilogy. All right. And I must say, I mean, I was excited to see where the series went, mm -hmm. and I have some thoughts. Well, that's excellent. That's what we're here to do, yeah. to tell everybody our thoughts. First off, I will say mm -hmm. that um, this looks nothing like the first game, Hospital really? Connect. No, it doesn't look anything like it at all. You're looking at the box. Okay, I understand. Yes, they went with a the theme with the boxes. Yes, they've got this this running thing going but when you pull out that board mm -hmm. mm -mm, we are not talking about the same okay game. No, no no the board yeah it's very obvious art style is totally different we're looking at a map mm -hmm. now of of, uh, of the area and um but it is the same artist it's just because of the different style of game yeah yeah it's gonna be a different style. well and it's a different time period yeah and um, I really appreciate mm -hmm. that though we're talking now about navigating a river yeah. and so we do need that like that that mm -hmm. map feel as opposed to what we were doing in the last game and mm -hmm. so I, I like what they did with this. I do appreciate the, that cohesiveness though because it is a sequel you do see the, that continue through line of the style of artwork just executed in a different way. Right and they also carry over that um, the heavy use of wooden components mm -hmm. that was so prevalent yes. in the first game. Yeah and they're they're great they're great to use everything's mm -hmm. great called good great quality in this game yes yeah absolutely so you're at least getting a nice nice physical bang for your buck with this one right all right so let's move on to just getting into the game okay the ease of learning and the ease of playing all essentially right. um i think this is definitely a heavier game uh, yes however that's on upon a first glance and a first look. Right. I feel like once you get through a couple of rounds and a whole game, everything clicks very well. You start to go with the flow like a river. You do. <laughs> and you also um, no, but every, yeah, I, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you some points for that one. But you do. It, it really does start to click. Yes. And in you will probably get a sense of feeling overwhelmed at first. Yes. But just dive in. <laughs> just dive in and start start digging into the rules. And the best advice I can give you on this game is just to get it all set up yes. and go. Yeah, and just walk yourself through mm -hmm. some rounds. Yeah. That's a and, great way to learn. And once you do that, you, you shouldn't have any problems. Right. All of the mechanisms and the concepts in the game um, are pretty... They, they make sense. Mm -hmm. and well, and once you start exploring mm -hmm. them and finding, oh, there's even more in here to dig right. into, it gets quite exciting. Right. Well, and it makes sense. It makes sense, sense that historically and thematically, too. Yes. Um, I mean, just from, like, the moving down river concept, well, it, that makes sense, considering the technology that you had at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that your coal degrades as you go over certain areas on the board, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Well, um, paying money to be hauled back up the river. Yeah in order to make those other exactly. and, full stops. Yeah. And all the different upgrades um, that you can get, mm -hmm. um, all of that makes sense. And the fact that, you know, when you have to deliver to certain areas of, of the river before you can access different abilities. Yes. I mean, it all is just pretty straightforward. So yes, at first it might seem complicated, but I think you can, I believe in you. I think you can. <laughs> and as far as teaching it goes, um, it, it's pretty much the same thing. Like if you've played this a lot and then you break it out for someone new. You're going to need to kind of hold their hand and walk them through the first yeah. couple of rounds. Yeah. So that being said, though, it's it's a snap once you get into it. Definitely. I will mm -hmm. wholeheartedly agree yeah. with that. So along with that, though, like there's some really, and I feel like the same applied with Hospital Connect, the, mm -hmm. the first one in this game. Some pretty unique or at least new to us concepts in the game, the mechanisms. Um, I've never seen coal represented as dice before. That was really and neat. And that was, that was neat to see that. And the fact that you're not rolling them, you're just 
turning them mm -hmm. to represent the degradation yes. of the coal. Um, that's cool. I, and I, I like the whole moving down river idea and the way you, ha you have to, you know, make some decisions and spend some resources to do more powerful things. That's so true. Mm -hmm. So you really have to be able to make a wise decision, but you also have to see where the other player is going, whether if they could pile it right past you and shoot on down to the river to mm -hmm. the next point or where you were gonna go. Yeah. Um, and so I really like that you've got you've got to really see all the wheels turning. Mm -hmm. You can't focus too much on one particular yes. aspect. Yes. You need to keep a lot of plates spinning in this game. Mm -hmm. um, you need to be aware of how much money you have, how much you're going to have to spend, um, and and how you can get to those different places to be able to get those upgrades. Yeah, and that's what I was about to say. I think that's the most difficult thing for me. Yes. Is determining which upgrades I need to go for first, mm -hmm. and figuring out how to get to those areas on the board and deliver coal there, so that I can unlock those upgrades in the right order. Mm -hmm. um, and and I find that because every time we've played, I've done it in a different order. Yes. And it's, <laughs> one has never been better for me than the <laughs> other. You always end up kicking my rear on this one. <laughs> um, but I like exploring that and just seeing what happens. Um, doing things in a different order every time we play. Right. I think that might be my favorite thing about this game, though. Yes, is... I think there's a lot to explore. Mm -hmm. I really Absolutely. enjoy that aspect of it. Yeah. Um, so with that, when we've played it, we've we've played it two player. Yes. Um, it can't go up to four players, but um, we've simply played it two player, and mm. um, we're married with four games. We think that's totally fine. <laughs> yes. And I think it's totally doable at two player. Mm. It's not that kind of game where it's feels kind of just easy mm -hmm. and it'll be more exciting and fun with four players i mean i'm sure it will drastically change the game to play yeah. it with more than two players but at the same time i do think there's plenty of challenge there yeah i think what it does at two player is it kind of opens it up for you to do your own thing and there's more room for exploration in that yes. because you're not worrying about too many other people but there is that added challenge of keeping your eye on what the other person's doing mm -hmm. But I have felt like that when we do play it, I have that freedom to really try new things. Yes. As opposed to, I wouldn't probably be able to do that in a four-player. Oh, no. You're probably just trying frantically to get there before somebody mm -hmm. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that you can't really worry mm -hmm. about planning too far in advance. One thing that I really appreciate in all of these games is the historical context of everything that you're doing. They do a fantastic job of that. It's, it's very well done, yes. um, integrated mechanically. But also in the rule books. Mm -hmm. Well, and on the board itself, yeah. I mean, it shows you what year it is, and then the way it describes it. Even the iconography makes total sense mm -hmm. with what what's going on yeah. with those historical events. Well, and, and it's not just the historical events that they give those footnotes for. I mean, it's anything at all concerning to what you are doing in this game and and why that's in the mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Um, they explain it to you that yeah. way, and, and I really appreciate that. It, it just adds that extra layer to the game, and um, I love the, the context that everything is placed into. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're learning something, and something that I never thought I would be interested in learning about, honestly. I mean, coal, but <laughs> it's really fascinating to see the way all of this used to be done. Yes. And, and how integral it yeah. was to a daily life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and then to tag on to that with the, the Ruhr, but then going on to the Ohio, you know, it's the same thing with that. You've got all of the historical notes with um, trade and delivering goods up whatever, oh, I guess it's the Ohio River. Mm -hmm. right? That's why it's called. There you go. Um, but just seeing how, how that all worked, I mean, I would much rather learn history through playing game than reading a history book. <laughs> okay. And it sticks with you because you're a part of it. You're you well. are delivering the cows. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Spencer. So, um, I think this is a worthy sequel to Hospital Connect. Oh, definitely. And I appreciate that it's not just the same ideas, but a couple of things added. Oh. With the fact that it's a completely different game. Right, well, it makes me excited to see what's gonna be the third installment. Mm -hmm. how, are, how are they gonna implement this? And, yeah. and what will be in that game? Yeah, because I loved Hospital Connect, and, and this is a worthy sequel for sure. Wonderful. Absolutely. Um, one other thing, what was I gonna say? 
I don't know. <laughs> I know I've got one more thing. Oh, go ahead. The Ohio is totally different. Yes, that's what I was going to say. It is completely different. I remember when we were playing it, I, there were there were some things I was going, you know, I just thought it would be like a smidge, kind of, a bit of re-theming. Mm -hmm, yeah. No, the game changes when you play the Ohio. I appreciate that they at least made a totally mm -hmm. separate rule book for it instead of just a little thing in the back to be like, then you can flip it over and you can play yeah. America. No, it's it's a different game. Well, so just let's, let's, know that. <laughs> let's be a little bit clear in that like it's the same, still the same concepts. You're still moving down river. A lot of the mechanisms are the same, but there are some things that you do kind of have to relearn. Yes. And 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 the tricky thing is, especially if you're used to playing the Ruhr, mm -hmm. is making that shift when yes. you play the other way. Yes, you do and, have to make a shift. And, and making that transition and resetting how you go about certain aspects of a similar concept. Right, well, and that being said, I'm gonna say it, I prefer the Ruhr. I do too. Um, and the thing, the thing about the, the Ohio, and I guess is my biggest complaint, if I have one, is that the Ohio rule book, it tells you everything's the same except for these things. Mm -hmm. So then if you're not 100% solid on the Ruhr, then you're flipping back and forth between two rule books because you have, what are we supposed to do here again? And you go back over to the Ruhr, okay. And then, oh wait, but it's a little bit different in the Ohio. So how does it apply in the Ohio? And so that does get a little bit um, convoluted and flipping back and forth through those two rule books. Right. Well, I think it's definitely different because then you're also factoring in like where you're meeting up at the railroad mm -hmm. um, on the Ohio, and and there's something there that we didn't didn't quite click for us, yeah. and it was just kind of a point that we were kind of ignoring that, yeah. just just staying yeah. over here, and so I prefer the rural to yeah. the Ohio. And so like, but that might be a positive for you that if essentially you're almost if you're, getting. If at the rural you're going, this sounds boring, maybe you should yeah. get, just go straight to the Ohio. But I mean, at the same time, you're essentially almost getting two games in one. Yes, I think that's really neat. I think there's enough value in both of them to play them separately and consider them as being two different games. Yes. Um, just consider it as like, you know, a game that comes out with a second edition that's slightly different than the first. Mm -hmm. And you could, and you, I totally see the value in having those that that variant. And I appreciate it. it. Just for us, we we would prefer just playing the original game. Yes. So having said all of that, how much we love the mechanisms and the historical aspect and and the way everything is implemented in the game, we have some thoughts and some ratings. Yes. All right, I'll go first. Okay. Unless you want to. Um, no, I, I. You can go first. Do we need to reiterate our ratings? Yes. Let's let's recap our ratings. We'll, we'll recap stone our ratings. Um, our uh, rating system is based on rating a scale of one to five. Yes. One being, thanks but no. Two being, just friends. <laughs> Three being. Going steady. Going steady. Four is put a ring on it, and five. Saying I do. Saying I do. You can see the level of commitment as you progress from a one to a five, your level of commitment to the game. Um, okay. I've thought about it. Okay. I like the game. Yes. Mm, it's a tough call because I'm trying to compare it to Hospital Connect. They're just so different. They are extremely different. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to say put a ring on it. Wow. Yes. Yes. My goodness. And here's why. Um, just that element of exploration each time, um, getting to try something new, I find that refreshing in my brain. <laughs> um, it's not a theme that I'm crazy about, mm -hmm. um, but just for the sheer mechanics of the game mm -hmm. and getting to explore those. And again, how, even though I'm not a history buff, how well that history is integrated into the game and the theme, um, I really enjoy this one, and I don't foresee it being one that will break out often, just because it is a lot to set up, it and is. there's a lot to it. There's value there in the the experiences and the joy that I've had in playing with it. So, a four for me, put a ring on it. Okay, well, I'm going to say we're going steady. Okay. Um, because again, it is a game that I enjoy, but it's not going to be my go-to because I know that I'm going to need a huge refresher before I can play this game again. Good point. And um, 
it is a big footprint. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to put out there. Lots of mo lots <laughs> of moving pieces yeah. that even just a quick refresher on the game, I'm still going to be in like on the fourth round and going, oh, I could have been doing this. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, so that's that's my main reason why mm -hmm. I'm going to go. We're just going to go steady. All right. So we've got some varying levels of commitment, but it doesn't mean our overall dice tower seal is going to be varying. I think we're both fully on board and saying that this is a seal of approval. Yes. I definitely approve of this game. Recommend it to anyone who likes a Euro style games, mm -hmm. pick up and deliver style games, games with historical aspects to them, and any type of game that you like uh, exploring how to best upgrade and be efficient in what you are doing. Definitely. Yeah. So, do you have anything else to say about the Nope. All right, well, we're looking forward to number three in the series. And you can look to our three types of social media accounts. Yes, you can find I'm so good at those, aren't I? <laughs> Segways are <laughs> Off the top flawless. Of my <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on Instagram at Married with BG. We're also on Twitter at Married with BG. And we have a Facebook account, facebook.com slash Married with BG. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing all those things. You're welcome. And thank you for sharing your time with us by watching this video. Until next time, I'm Spencer. I'm Laura. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.